All right, welcome back. So we got nice, beautiful warning, nice and calm. It's about 5.30, we're on the sound, and we're gonna try to find Fluke and Porgy. So I'm gonna stay a little shallower today, focus really just like in the, the boulder stuff. Been having decent luck in the shallow. Utilize the side scan a bit, try to find some new boulders. You know, I know a good patch of them that are really shallow, but I wanna kinda of find some that are maybe a tiny bit deeper. All right, water temps are 72. And we got the uh, outgoing tide. It's gonna switch around 7.30, so. Pretty, maybe work in like a lot of slow water. That's also why I kinda wanna stay shallow so I can cast around and stuff. You know, this is pretty much summer fishing, you know, at least in this area. In the Western Sounds, it just becomes like Porgy's the only game in town. Or I should say the best game in town. It's the easiest fish to catch around here. You can get all the fish, but porgies are just like everywhere all the time. It's a good porgy. Oh. Oh. Thirteen. So we'll keep them. I definitely want a couple porgies. Bleed them out. All right, restarted the drift. I'm just gonna let myself drift the same way. Not like a, a perfect drift by any means, but. It'll work. Fish are seeing this thing. See no reason to change the bait. Oh yeah, it's a nice porgy. Try to keep like 13s. Oh yeah, they're down there. That one feels pretty, pretty nice. That's a good one. that one. They're not like monsters. It's like another 12 and a half. Yeah, we'll keep them. Oh, get out. Oh, is that a, what is that? Something nice. Either that or I foul took somebody. This is heavy. Oh, look at that guy. Jumbo. He's like 15. It's hooked really strangely. <sighs> Still tastes the same on the dinner plate. Still got the same worm. And it's like cut. It's still doing really good. I'm gonna keep using it. Oh, man. 
as soon as we hit the bottom. Oh. These things fight so good. Yeah, he was like 12 and a half again. Seems to be the going rate around here. There's no scent on this thing either. We're just jigging away. We're 23 feet, dang. Always, as soon as I hit the bottom. Bait's messed up again. Take a little more off. This allows us to get a little better hook in there. Amazing how well this thing holds up to the porgies. With gulp, I'd be done. Like, those tails would be done. <sighs> I think I might put the underwater camera down. <laughs> okay, so I didn't do much underwater, but I did a little bit. And I think what's really important to note here is just how different the water clarity can be. Right there, you kind of saw a rock going down along the bottom, but we can hardly tell like where we are and where the current's going. And this is about 25 feet or so. I think it's like a four inch jerk shed on a three eighth ounce jig head. We got decent current. Oof. That's a good sign, someone hit it right away. Oh yeah, look at all those porgies there. It's a little tough to catch porgies on the jerk shed, but it's not impossible. I do want to be facing the other way though. <laughs> Never gonna get a good hook set with it going under my boat like that. The fluke will actually like sit on the tops of the boulders. It's mm, a porgy. Ooh. The jerk shot, I don't mind a little bit of scope in my line. I feel like it gives a better fall presentation. You don't want too much because then you'll get snagged on the boulders, but just enough angle. There we go. live on lots of porkies on the bottom oh oh dude that is a monster porky oh my goodness Look at that thing. Wow. Choked it. Choked it. Look at him. Ate the whole thing. Nice, Borgie. I'll get him on the stringer. Fourteen. Fourteen inches. I'll try the underwater camera one more time. It's just the water clarity is not good. But let's see, maybe... Maybe because we moved a little bit shallower, it'll be alright. Alright, and here, what a difference. Um, as you can see, I can see the bottom clearly. The starfish is there. And you're just going to be able to see a lot of fish, a lot of rocks. And it's just quite amazing because I was in 25 feet before and this is only 17, 18 feet. And it's just such a stark difference. Um, but yeah, I've attached a fish bite tail there 
to kind of just, you know, draw the porgies in, maybe hopefully get some shots of them going after it. And there you see, these are the boulders. Oh, these are the types of boulders that I'm working. There's the jerk shed in the background. You know, they're not tall boulders. They're just kind of boulder patches, small boulders, a foot tall, two feet tall. But it definitely has the porgies attracted to this area. And the last thing I'll mention is just how, if you look closely, there are quite a few smaller porgies. Uh, so to me, that just kind of proves that the jerk shad and the worm and, you know, these artificial baits really do attract the bigger fish out of the school because it's not like there were only jumbo porgies down there. There's These ones are definitely, you know, below that 12 and a half mark that I seem to be getting a lot of. And, you know, even smaller than that, probably even non-keepers around here. So there's definitely something to the artificial presentation attracting the larger fish out of the school. If you note too, the jerk shed is kind of going up and down and not really doing the kind of action that I prefer it to be doing and I'll explain that later in the video. But what's happening is I'm trying to keep it close to the camera. The camera has a pretty heavy weight so I'm pretty much vertical with this. But I actually prefer scope when I have a jerk shed and that's in order to create a more angled fall of the, of the jig. It's a nice quick drift. I mean, we're like flying through here. Oh, there we go. Maybe a sea robin. I should be going over a boulder here. I moved a tiny bit deeper. I wasn't just, I wasn't getting any bites. And I was a little too shallow. There we go. That's a good porgy. Big, big ones. Oh, that's a good one. I think we'll keep this one. Yeah. Still got the same jerk shine. And I have 13. It's pretty, pretty much par for the course today. I'll take them. It's a nice, nice one. I love this. I love how just cheap and effective this type of porky fishing is. You know, you don't, you don't have to buy bait. You don't even have to buy gulp. Oh man, this is a, this, this is a good fish. Oh, it's a sea bass, dude. Wow. That is a big sea bass for the Western Sound in 19 feet. He's not gonna keep, but that, 
That is rare. 16. He would have been like a last year's keeper almost. Fat belly. Super fat belly. We're gonna have to go back over that. Whew, man. Coming in shallow. Coming in shallow because there's bait here. Definitely gonna try that exact drift again. What is that? Is that a striper? He's swimming to the surface. I think it's a striper. See him on the screen right there. That's him. Try to get back down to the rock. Yep. Nice. Nice little bass. This is an epic little bowler patch I found. It's the same little jerk shad too. Just gonna keep using it. Oh, somebody took off with it. Another nice boulder coming up. Oh, what's that? What is that? Oh, the sea bass again? Yeah. Dang, man. This is crazy. It's shallow. Man, he was probably another 15. Literally the same jerk shed. It's probably caught five fish now, six fish. I think what's helping is the tide is, is now like, you know, moving backwards. My bait is looking much better now than it was before. It's just around here, at least, it is so hard to catch fish on a, on a slack tide. You just need current. I think the fish are there, but they just... Oh! oh. Look at this porgy. Wow. Dude, we are on them. Look at that porgy. Nice porgy. Keep him. Swap him out with this one. Alright. This thing might be on its last one. Try it one more time. Oh my goodness. Dropping real porgy fishing on a jerk shed. It's as fun as it gets. As long as, at least as porgies go, in my opinion. All, all it is is just a cluster of three foot boulders. Let's see, you can see I'm just going over these things. They're like two feet high, actually. Oh, but there's a bunch of them. And I think that's the key. Right. Put a new one on. <laughs> Let's not get so cheap that we lose the action. This is what they are. Tennessee Spice 5-inch. 
Hennessy Spice. I'll go through it one more time. And then we'll keep moving on. I mean, it's it's a good patch of boulders, but I, I just want to see the other ones. I want to find new ones. All right, so that's it. Five inch t Tennessee Spice. When I bought these, I based it on them looking like the new penny of the gulp. Because I know new penny works really good in my area. I don't know why. I think it's the clarity of the water. These looked super similar to that and there was clearance i'll leave links of course i don't know how much color matters i think it does matter a little bit uh, i think size matters more the shape and the and the length all right and we're not using scent no scent what i'm really hoping for is a keeper sea bass or a fluke but catching big porgies along the way is fun Ooh, there was a bite. So what I'm doing is just, I really am focusing the most on the, on the fall back down. The moment you feel like a sharp tap on the line or a sudden stop, you know, when you think the bottom should happen and it happens much earlier, that's usually a fish. So it's, that's a take. Another take is just a sharp grab on the line. It's pretty noticeable once you get the hang of it. See? You don't want, you don't want that. What you want instead is this. You want, you want it falling on an angle, not not straight down. You want it like this. There we go. Look at that thing. See ya. That's all right. I don't think I'm keeping any more. Try the worm thing again. I just want to see if it's working. We are trying to get some more fluke too, so. I just know this is a fluke killer. Jeez. Oh my God. Chumbos. Just chumbos, man. This usually is pretty decent fluke territory where I am right now. Definitely caught fluke here in previous years. I kind of would be surprised if I don't catch a single one. Porgy. Jumbo scup. All right guys, that's it. Getting hot, gotta get back in. Good little morning. Uh, porgy bite was really good. Decent sized sea bass, for this area at least. Very shallow, 20 feet. I don't think I'll spend too much time, you know, trying to catch fluke in these areas. A lot of fun to catch porgies on bite tackle and artificial. I really think you guys should try it. And I'm sure many of you already are, but I know it can be more difficult probably from shore. But definitely, you know, give it a try. It's a lot of fun and uh, saves money. Saves a lot of money. All right, guys, as always, thanks for watching. And, uh, yeah, see you on the next one. Yeah, I caught some stuff. You got to clean them? Yeah, we're going to clean them. Whoa, that's a nice one. That's I like nice, that fish. That's a nice porgy. <laughs> Whoa. Well, this porgy was pretty fresh. Caught today. You can only see by the gills. Still nice and red. I'll keep sea bass whole sometimes, but porgies I fly. And I'll show you the recipe I do.
Yeah, this is, this is a nice porgy. It's probably like a 14 incher. big ones still get a little blood they don't bleed out fully until they die go around the rib bones like right, so as I mentioned typically I will fillet porgies uh, the meat's a little greasy they do have a bloodline so I do prefer to really clean up the fillets but frying them is really good, baking is really good. Um, there's a lot of ways you can cook them. I'm gonna be taking the bloodline out anyway. That's probably more than I usually, that's more than enough because now you have to cut like that. Show you on this one, try to do a little less. That's perfect. So you want some of the bloodline, this thin one, to be here. And you just want this part to be here. Just this is where the bones are. And they stop to about right here. So I just cut two fillets now. I'll just get rid of this. They always seem to have like blood here. I don't know what it is. I notice that. Yeah, those are two nice uh, fillets. I'll put a piece of uh, paper towel in there. And I'll throw that in the fridge. Alright, so this recipe is very simple, very easy, and my whole family enjoys it. So that's what I do most of the time. As you can see, it's pretty much a basic fry recipe with the seasoning being Cajun and Old Bay. Uh, so it's a little spicy. You'll see what I do with the hot sauce, but it's really not that spicy. Once you cook it in the oil, uh, it's really not that spicy. Step one is to cut the pieces into manageable sizes. So I'll put some flour in here, put some of the Cajun seasoning as well as the Old Bay. We'll zip that back up and shake it. And then we'll put the smaller pieces in the flour mix and then shake it and then we'll get an egg for the egg wash put it in a bowl add the hot sauce to the egg and then we'll whip this up a decent amount of hot sauce um, you can experiment with different hot sauces I found this one it isn't that spicy all right in the pan we'll uh, put some vegetable oil and we'll put the uh, heat on medium so here I'm taking out the fillets from the flour seasoning mix and put it aside and then put the panko in the same bag. So you can just mix the panko with the same flour seasoning that you made. And what you'll see here is I'm just kind of crushing it a little bit so that they're just not you know, super huge pieces. But now once the fire gets hot enough, we'll dip the piece of fish in the egg wash and then back in the panko and then once it's in the panko we'll put it on the on the uh, oil So these don't take long, I would say three, four minutes each side or even less. Panko burns pretty quick, so you gotta be careful. 
Uh, once that's done though, take it out and then salt. Always put salt on the filet right as soon as it comes off. Good girl. Did you try a little bit? Wanna try a tiny bit? Perfect. Good boy. Yeah, how about you? You like the fish yet? Yeah.